as marketers, I mean, how, how do you know that the marketing then is actually working for the people? I mean, what kind of KPIs are you looking for? I mean, sales are one indicator, I, I, I presume, but I mean, sales can come from anywhere. I mean, how would you view this? Yeah, good question. So our company, for instance, we measure success. We optimize to success at all funnel stages, ranging from brand awareness. You know, perhaps you have a new brand and want to make more consumers aware of it. Perhaps you have uh, the need to change your reputation uh, as a brand. Um, all the way down to um, actual visits uh, and purchases. And if it's online visits, uh, if it's online purchases, what we call incrementality measurement is always on. So incrementality measurement is the delta between the number of people who saw your advertising and bought the thing because they saw the advertising versus people who saw your advertising, comma, bought the thing, but they were going to buy the thing anyhow. So your ad that you showed to them was not a good use of, of your marketing dollars. Right. It cost you money because they were going to, to buy that. So maybe get a little bit more granular. I mean, how do you separate that out then in detail that's also accurate? Yeah. So uh, you come to the, we're a demand side platform. It's called a DSP. Uh, we connect marketers with consumers. Um, you come to the platform and you're asked the question, what do you want to do? Uh, do you want to raise awareness of your brand? Do you want to drive foot traffic to a retail location? Do you want to drive online sales? Um, and based upon what they select, we use a number of different techniques and in some cases, some partners to help understand the effectiveness of the campaign and then optimize towards it. Because what you don't want to do is run a campaign for brand awareness and you go out to a brand study company and you spend a bunch of money and they do a study for you and maybe uh, you get some of the results midway through the flight sometimes you don't get any results until after the campaign's over and then what like what are you going to do so you got to be able to do that in as close to real time as possible so that you can make those changes as quickly as possible um, to make the most of your marketing budget and, and reduce waste. How, how quick is quick? I mean, you're talking days, weeks, months. It depends on the channels and it depends on the KPI. So if it's online sales or website visits, it's virtually instant. Um, for brand uh, awareness and brand lift, for instance, we work with a great partner called Lucid. Um, they survey uh, consumers. They have, I think they call a panel of panels, which are consumers who've opted in to see advertising and then get questions answered based upon it. So they um, show the ad to some consumers and they show not the ad to some consumers. And the difference between those two pools and any lift uh, that's measured in brand awareness, brand perception, um, that's where you get to your KPI. Uh, for, for online sales, it's, it's quite different. Um, it's simply a matter of the conversion event being the sale. You can imagine that works really well for e-commerce marketers. Then for retail, um, we're also able to measure with a partner called Cubic foot traffic. So if you are a bank uh, and you're not really expecting people to open an account online for whatever reason, you want them to come into the branch location, we can actually measure how many people who saw the ad went to that branch location after having seen or, or heard the ad. So how do you how do you actually pull that off? Can you discuss some of the secret sauce there? That That's interesting in itself. It is sauce, but it is not secret. So for online conversions and for online sales, we use a methodology called ghost bids. Uh, we didn't invent it. Um, I would encourage folks to, to Google it, either ghost bids or ghost ads. But the long and the short of it is, it uses the same techniques as drug trials, randomized control trials, to differentiate between those whom you've treated, right? In our case, it's those who've seen the ad, um, and then your control group. These are folks who've, who've not seen the ad. Now, we're doing internet advertising and not saving lives. So whereas with drug trials, you need to be really, really, really precise um, in Advertising, you can model um, a bit. So you don't necessarily have to have 
the exact same population of individuals that are surveyed. You're able to do data modeling um, using anonymous identifiers to sort of uh, infer some takeaways from um, is this working? Is this not working? Okay. So I want to ask then, like older stuff, like proxy metrics. First off, what is a proxy metric? And why would you say that they are the wrong way to measure ads? The worst thing we did as an industry, we started to do in the late 90s when we provided reports to advertisers that had two metrics on them, impressions and clicks. Uh, which led enterprising individuals to say, aha, a measure of campaign success is the click-through rate. How many people who saw the campaign clicked on it? Unfortunately, it turns out to be one of the worst measures of campaign success because you're just measuring how many people clicked on an ad, not how many people clicked on an ad on purpose uh, because they were in market for something. And so even some of the earliest studies were showing that people who click on ads tend to not be the same people who buy stuff. And so other metrics, first of all, I am very sorry to say that there are marketers who are still optimizing to click through rate today. And I cannot possibly recommend against that more. More metrics came out in more recent years, something like cost per action. So what was the cost that it took to get the user to take the action?